guys, Stanford here from Kona Rodics Network, and welcome back to an episode of Behind the Bumpers. And today, I'm hanging out with Team 294 here at Beach Blitz, and we're going to be taking a look at this really slick machine they've got here. We've got their hopper with an integrated climber into it, three-stage continuous elevator, end effector, lots of fun software tricks and sensors in this robot. So stay tuned for another look at that, and more in an episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. First Team SolidWorks is free for you. Design in 3D, build your robot, and gain the career-ready skills 80% of employers look for when hiring engineers. Get SolidWorks for your entire team when you go to SolidWorks.com first. Founded by FIRST alumni, FRC Tees understands what teams need. High quality apparel fast. From t-shirts to jackets and more, with a free 14-day turnaround and faster options available, you can join 200 plus teams who are already saving. Apply for a sponsorship and get your quote now at FRCTees.com. All right, take it away. All right, so starting off with our general game strategy, we had three main constraints for a robot. One was we wanted to hold two game pieces at the same time, so an algae and a coral. Two, we needed to have a pretty good way of acquisition uh, coral. So that was either through a ground intake or a giant hopper. Uh, so moving into our hopper, uh, we decided to go with something that's really big. So uh, defense could be really effective if uh, you had a really shallow hopper. Uh, so the big hopper that can load from three sides is really effective uh, from defending against defense. Our climb is also integrated into our, uh, our hopper. So how this works is we actually stuffed some uh, aluminum cookies into our uh, our max spline. This was because we were dealing with twisting on our uh, max spline. Uh, so the climber just folds back in and the cage uh, sits in between here. Uh, our hopper is power. Uh, what that means is we can, uh, acquire, we can acquire pieces from any direction. Uh, so as long as you get it in the hopper, the hopper will figure uh, the pieces out. And um, how many like iterations did it take to get this climb? Like, did you have to use the magnets that a lot of teams with this style use? Like, uh, what, was, what are some of the tricks you have for that? Yeah, so we started off with like a prong style uh, climb, uh, and we realized that that really wasn't working for us. We really wanted to do a powered climb, but due to weight constraints this year, uh, we couldn't get to it. So the uh, taffy puller is something that really was effective for us. Um, so going into a champs, this was our ad. So it uh, basically just uh, levers on the cage. Uh, so it took about three or four uh, iterations before we got it right. All right, awesome stuff. Uh, so now I will be talking about our end effector and our elevator. So uh, one of our major design requirements at the start of the season was the ability to hold both game pieces, the algae and the coral. Um, and this is and this is what our end effector was designed to do. You want to demonstrate? So let's go intake uh, algae right now in the ground. And then we are also able to intake coral, give it a coral. So now we're able to both score an algae in the net or a processor and also then put a coral up on the reef. And this is the net. Yeah, and our elevator. And we're also able to go up to the reef. Cool. And we also have, our, our elevator is a Three moving stage elevator, continuous elevator, and we add and we have everything. It's a belted elevator, and everything. It's and the belts are run in between the stages and inside the tubes. So you can take a look in here. You can actually see the belts running through in the stages and transmitting the power from the base of the gearbox. And the entire elevator subsystem is running off of two Kraken X60s, powered by a one to five gear ratio. All right. And what was the decision process between like cascade and continuous? Is that why you because you wanted a pass through, or was it because of the other benefits of a, a continuous elevator? So one of the large, well, the main reason we wanted to do a continuous elevator at the start of the season was actually because of this the ability of running everything on the inside. So getting a power transmission going on the inside. Since the, since we were able to run everything, transmit power on the inside of the elevator. Um, it basically freed up a lot of space for us to work on our other designs, such as this end effector and, uh, for example, our, our hopper. Okay. Cool and if stuff. you didn't do it in the belt inside the tubes, it would have been much harder for us to try to get it designed and hooked up. All right. Awesome stuff. Let's go ahead and hear about the uh, software about this robot. Yeah. So I'm going to go into a bit about some sensors on the robot. Um, for hand coders, we've got one on each swerve module. So that's four total so far. We've got another one on the climber here, which makes it really easy to reset between matches. 
and we have one more all the way over here on the wrist. Uh, I believe it's on this side, right there. And that makes it look really easy to know um, angles and you know how stuff's moving. Um, also here, as you can see, as the LEDs are moving up, uh, we do have LEDs in this robot. They are controlled by the candle. Uh, so right now, this is showing the last part of the match. Um, and they have other functions as well, which makes it really easy for the drive team to know what's going on with the robot. Um, yeah, we also have a banner sensor over here in the front for coral. So if I stick my hand right here, um, you see it. And if I cover it, then we know there's a coral there. We also got right here a pump switch that detects algae. That right there. Um, so we know when we have a piece and then we can, in software, we can allow the robot to do stuff with those pieces now that we know that we have them. Or we can also prevent it from moving without a piece. Uh, Cause you know, maybe there's coral jam. We don't want to destroy our elevator. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna hand it to Carolina so she can go over some cooler programming stuff. Yeah, so in terms of the way that the wrist and elevator work, so if you see it during a match, it might seem pretty simple, like the elevator goes all the way up and then the wrist moves, but actually the way it's programmed is quite a bit more complicated. So we have um, specific allowed wrist and elevator regions in the code, and we want to make sure that the wrist and elevator are moving at the same time in a smooth way, um, and in a way that they won't be colliding with any of the reef poles while um, going up in order to score algae. So we have um, a state machine that basically tracks whether the wrist and the elevator are in the correct allowed regions and that way um, the wrist and the elevator are not colliding with anything and still having smooth movement throughout um, going up to score. Now in terms of autonomous and automation, so our goal is to make the driver's job as easy as possible um, and so we have, using those camera sensors, we're able to have a specific um, location where the robot is um, at any time during the match and using that localization we have specific reef locations um, within our code so that when the reef uh, when the robot is scoring at the reef locations so able to drive to the nearest location during teleop and that way um, it can align itself automatically and then score and then that takes off a lot of stress for the driver and that routine is also used in our autonomous section and our autonomous is very very modular um, which makes uh, our job a lot easier in terms of programming it because we have to do a lot less work and we also take advantage of the symmetry of the field um, to make sure that we're able to mirror our um, routines across the field on both lines of symmetry um, and that also removes a lot of work we had to do and in terms of autonomous routines we have two different options essentially so we have the side auto which is a three-piece auto um, that scores on EDC or JKL um, reef positions. And we also have a center auto, which um, scores the preload on the H uh, scoring location. And then we're able to pick up two algae from the reef and score them both in the barge. And um, what kind of uh, software solution do you have for localization? Is it Photon Vision or is it something kind of more custom? Yeah, so localization, we do use the Photon Vision library um, and a couple other libraries that we also use and other open source materials is Advantage Scope for uh, debugging and data logging, as well as Choreo to plan out our um, trajectories for autonomous routines. All right, folks, so that was your look at this amazing 294 machine. These guys have been looking fantastic here at Beach Blitz, and I guarantee they're going to be an amazing team to look at next year. So check these guys out. We want to thank you guys so much for allowing us to take a look at this robot, and good luck with the rest of your competition. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Founded by FIRST alumni, FRC Tees understands what teams need. High quality apparel fast. From t-shirts to jackets and more, with a free 14-day turnaround and faster options available, you can join 200 plus teams who are already saving. Apply for a sponsorship and get your quote now at frctees.com. First Team SolidWorks is free for you. Design in 3D, build your robot, and gain the career-ready skills 80% of employers look for when hiring engineers. Get SolidWorks for your entire team when you go to solidworks.com first.